life of service draws to a close. At the age of 88, Herbert Hoover, the 31st President of the United States, met the latest crisis of his long career in New York City, a revered elder statesman to whom the nation's leaders listened with respect. In 1950, as the then only living ex-president of the United States, Mr. Hoover observed his 75th birthday at Palo Alto, California, and the country he served sent its best wishes. Starting when a teenage century emerged from its first world war, he was a savior when he organized the relief program that rescued Europe, including Russia, from the scourge of famine. After that, there was no returning to private life for the efficient Quaker engineer. As a cabinet officer for two presidents, he displayed the qualities to be considered as first-class presidential timber, the highest office falling to him when President Coolidge chose not to run, and it followed that with the man he served, he left the White House for his inauguration. Another former president, Chief Justice William Howard Taft, administered the oath of office that you will preserve, maintain, and defend the Constitution of the United States. I do. Hoover's vice president was Charles Curtis, and his cabinet included such worthies as Henry L. Stimson and Andrew W. Mellon. Inventor Thomas Alva Edison was his good friend and wise counselor. When the fortunes of politics returned Mr. Hoover momentarily to private life, he relaxed for the first time in decades. But a puzzled world time and again called him back to action. President Truman valued and sought his considered advice. Once again, he saved Europe from starvation and drew up a constructive governmental reorganization plan. One of his most endearing moments came when he visited his birthplace in West Branch, Iowa, and he delivered his inspiring message, an American creed. America is a land of self-respect, and self-respect is born alone of free men and free women. It is these moral and spiritual qualities in free men which fulfill the meaning and the dream of the word American, and with them will come centuries of further greatness to our country. A man of many parts, rewarded by a life lived to the fullness of a distinguished old age.